Welcome back to this is a live the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. Well, Sheon Kuti is now here. Uh, and joining me now uh, to discuss the NSAS protests and also issues that have developed in the last uh, two days about NSAS governance and all of those issues uh, is Sheon Kuti. You all know him. Uh, but one of the issues is that he's one of the loudest voices in the uh, clamor for a new Nigeria. And it is safe to say that Sheon Kuti took after his late father, Fela and Nikola Kukuti, who was a musical maestro and forever a legend. Sheon, good to have you. Hey, Gomi. Thanks was, for having I me was, on the show. I was worried. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you were supposed to start the program with NSAS, and I was saying, where is my brother? Where is my brother? <laughs> you know, you know, you know uh, <laughs> what I was, happened? I was told this morning, and my wife was in Badagri. It was kind of a hectic day yesterday for her. I, I don't want to go into that anyway. But anyway, it took us about an hour and a half to get here. Uh, because Thurmanland Bridge is closed for repairs again. Mm. <laughs> Yet again, uh, for 48 hours. So uh, I think that caused serious conge congestion on the other alternative routes. So it was difficult to get here. It was difficult to get here. Well, but I'm glad you are here now. No, I'm happy to be here. It's good to see you. Our main subject is answers. <laughs> Three years after. Do you think that we have learned any lessons? Have we? Both the people and the police, and also the young people who took to the barricades three years ago? Well, I think uh, we've not really made any progress. I don't think we've not learned anything. I think we've learned how fragile the trade that holds this society together is, really. I think NSA showed us that. You know, also how untrustworthy people in power are, those that are so rich and well-fed, holding Gary and Indomie, that should have been given to the poor when they were locked down, you know, for what purpose was those things that they did not even need? For what purpose was it kept away from the people? You know, I think people learned a lot of the nature of the society that we live in from that. But in terms of progressing from that, I don't think we made any progress. You know, both the people, in terms of understanding their relationship with power and how to engage with power, and those in power, in terms of how to, you know, engage with their people, I think. Yeah, but NSAS was uh, uh, disbanded. And, you know, at that time, the uh, Inspector General of Police said, oh, look, uh, policemen will be subjected as requested to <laughs> mental health check and all that. Do you think that the police are now sinner, you know, in terms of their relationship with the people? The police is the human representative, is an institution, right, part of a system. It is our first, it's most time the only, con the first contact we have with our system in the, as the people, you know. And I think the police is a fair reflection of the kind of system that we live under. You know? And I don't think the policemen themselves are to blame. You know, I think the issue really is that they're a reflection of those that gave them the job, you know, and those that are supposed to maintain maintain the job. I am close to some policemen, in fact. I don't want to say the states, but one of the commissioners in Nigeria is one of my closest persons in my life, are very close to me. And I know that his job and his nature are at odds all the time. Because the job itself prevents the better part of the man from coming through. So that is a larger issue that Nigerians have to address. You know, how are we going to be policed? Are we going to still be policed the way the colonial, the colonialists set up the police force as a way to protect the people from them? Or are we going to create a police system, a police unit that actually is there to protect the people in general? I mean, this is 2023. What is the number that we're supposed to call if we, are, if we need police to come to our house in an emergency? That should tell us all we need to know. You know, answers or no answers. You know, police brutality and the relationship between the police and the Nigerian people, you know, the impunity at which they operate, you know, this is something that should be addressed, but not by sacking one policeman every time. We should see that this issue is systemic and bring systemic solutions to the issue. But we are still lying to ourselves like, oh, it's some few bad eggs in the police force, when we all know that it's a systemic issue that should be addressed head on. So that's why the NSAS itself could not move forward with any real proper 
uh, progress in this relationship, you know, because um, the Nigerian uh, police still wasn't spoken to. NSAS, NSAS is a police unit. I was saying to a friend of mine, you know, the NSAS, does that mean police brutality is going to stop and the way all the other police units interact with Nigeria is going to change? We need a holistic approach, you know, not the elitist pick and choose we like to do here. Okay, look, after that uh, incident, the Nigerian government, the state, Kwa state, tried to make some efforts, right? Uh, one of the efforts that they made was disbanding the NSAS and, uh, you know, um, reversing uh, some of the measures that were taken. But we are now being told by Amnesty International <laughs> that there are some people who are still in detention. In Lagos State, Lagos State government paid compensation, set up a tribunal, a, 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 a panel to look into the matter. Other states did the same thing, you know, and people were compensated and all of that. Do you think that that has gone far enough and that government has at least tried to meet the people halfway to reassure them, to build confidence and trust uh, but in the know, state? What was fascinating to me is that the state itself disavowed the findings of its own, uh, the tribunal is set up to look into the, the special offenses tribunal is set up to look into the whole answers and police issue in Lagos State. You know, so we can say that the compensations are a form of tokenism. Knowing fully well that many of the people that protested are still in, some of them are locked up in different states as we speak, you know. So my issue is not whether one person is compensated or one person is not compensated. My issue is how do we change this relationship so that the police of Nigeria and the people of Nigeria are not constantly at loggerheads with each other, you know, to create a viable police force, you know, that represents the well-being of its people, the security of its people. You know, uh, I'm tired of living in a country where I'm afraid of my security forces. You know, I was saying to people, to somebody that was kind of pro-police and was a military guy arguing for their, their institutions. And I said, you cannot deny the fact that, you know, if someone is sleeping in his house in this country and it's 2 a.m. in the morning, and you hear a loud, loud bang on your door, and the person says, I'm robber. <laughs> you will feel, it is the same fear you will feel in your heart that you will feel if you hear Nigeria Army, Nigeria Police at 2 a.m. in the morning. And it shouldn't be so. We shouldn't be afraid in our hearts that way, you know, if we hear the names of these institutions called as we hear the names of things that are supposed to hurt us being called. So that for me is the fundamental thing that must be addressed. Okay, but so one of the things that Nigerian youths asked for, because this was some kind of opposition between young people of Nigeria and the government of Nigeria, they asked for good governors. Yes. Now, since then, we have had uh, a transition. Uh, we had a general election. We have President Tinubu there. President Tinubu has appointed a new inspector general of police, and uh, he has told Nigerians that uh, hope will be restored. Do you think that at least on that particular issue of uh, good governance, good governance <laughs> that President Tinubu <coughs> is delivering and meeting our expectations, what, what do you think? No, I think Nigeria is, you know, with every new government, it is harder than the last, you know. And this is because of the contradictions that exist in our society. You know, um, for example, the whole foil subsidy narrative. Oh, we're going to remove foil subsidy, there'll be more money to do something, and then but we hear again that subsidy has come back to sta stabilize the price of oil so that it doesn't go up again because the Naira is falling. Mm -hmm. So the contradictions in our society are too much. You know, good governance is still far from the Nigerian people. And it's simple. This is because there are certain people in Nigeria that nobody can say no to. And because nobody can say no to them, their will must be done. Is there like there are demigods in our society. So for that reason, nobody can really deliver good governance to the Nigerian people. They can only be good governors 
for certain sections of certain parts of the Nigerian elite with each dispensation. And we, the people, are tired of that. We need a government that represents the true interest of Nigerian people. And those are the basic needs of society. I mean, you know, affordable food. I mean, I say to people like, what kind of people grow food in their own country that people in their society cannot afford? You should be ashamed if you are in the uh, food growing sector of this country. And there are some people in this country that work hard every day and they say that they cannot afford the food that you are selling. And you are a part of us in this country. You know, same goes for education, same goes for housing, same goes for everything else that we as Nigerians need and are totally uh, ignored or neglected about, you know. So, so are you saying basically that those major demands that the NSAS group, the movement, as it is otherwise known, put forward, have not been met? It's not been met. I think the NSAS also has betrayed itself. For a lot, and it was the criticism I have I had about NSAS, you know, um, because of the passion and the love that we have for, for the people, as much as we support something, those things that we support the most must be those things that we criticize the most so that we don't end up as psychophants, you know, and a lot of errors were made, you know, in the, in the whole NSAS approach to the government. You know, in his demand to end SARS, instead of saying just end police brutality or call for a reform of the police in, in general, I felt that in that way the demands fell short, you know. And in a way, he didn't even let anybody know what they were supposed to give to the people in terms of that. So I think in the next phase of our movement as Nigerian people to secure ourselves the country that we want, we must be kind of clear in what direction we want to go. I think in that way, you know, the end SARS kind of betrayed itself. You know, so mm. well maybe some people will disagree with you. Yeah, well, and they that could. may be a controversial point. But it, you know, it is we have to look at where we failed, so that we can correct it when we want to move forward. You know, if we don't um, pro properly assess what we've done, see how we fell short in certain areas. You know, we cannot say we as Nigerian people, we are trying on our own. We are the only people. You know, we we don't have any member of our professors or the elites. Only a few people are on the side of the people trying to support, not try to organize, but just support after we have started things. So in that way, we are doing a lot on our own, you know, uh, so definitely we'll make mistakes and there'll be errors. So we have to look at those mistakes, those errors and correct them when we move forward, you know, so that we don't make them again and again and again, you know. So in that way, you know, the answers kind of fell short. And I think the next time people will be more, how would I put, articulate in our demand, you know. Well, so let, let, let's breaking news. Uh, my directors uh, tell me. Uh, let's uh, take that breaking news, and then I'll come back to you to ask uh, one or two personal questions. Uh, news just reaching us says there was an assassination attempt on the governor of Kugi State, Yahaya Bello, a few kilometers away from Abuja, on his way to an official engagement from Lokoja. The attack occurred at about 4 p.m., Today, on Sunday, October 22, 2023, with the attackers uh, dressed in military uniforms and the way laid the governor's convoy shooting sporadically at his vehicle and other vehicles in his convoy. He took the sweet intervention of the security personnel attached to the governor to foil the attack by the unknown soldiers. In a statement released to Arise News, by the Kogi State Commissioner for Information and Communications, the attacks were at three different points. The last barricade being around Kuali Federal Capital Territory at about 4.20 p.m. The statement has called on Kogi State residents to remain vigilant and report suspicious movements in the state to relevant security agencies. Well, <laughs> Shimon, let me come back to you. Unknown soldiers, <laughs> unknown policemen. What yeah, a country. Yeah, well, you know, unknown civilians too. Oh. And all is equal to unknown government, you know. <laughs> no, the government is not. No, no, I mean, I, if you have unknown police. It's a constituted police, authority. But if you have unknown police, unknown soldiers, and then unknown civilians, ah, <laughs> is equal to unknown government. I mean, it's, that's just what it is because nobody takes responsibility for anything in this country. 
who spoiled the refineries of Nigeria? Who spoiled it? Nobody knows. Nobody, nobody takes responsibility. How is fuel, subsidy fuel, crossing the border out of Nigeria? Who is taking? Nobody, so everybody's unknown. Nobody knows it. But we know it's happening. You know, so <laughs> that's how Nigeria is built. You know. Uh, Okay, before we begin to round up, I, you know, you've been very critical of the state and also of the police and all of that. Okay, you were once reported to have slapped a policeman and that generated a lot of uh, issues. Did you slap uh, the policeman because, uh, you, you know, this out of this NSAS uh, activism? I think that was in May. No, so, of course. When was that? So, it was in May. It was in May, but uh, it had nothing to do with SAS. SAS was in 2020. Okay. You know. uh, yeah, well, three years later, <laughs> you know. It uh, well, could my, be a carryover aggression. No, no, not at all. Not okay. at all. Uh, you could as well say that the carryover aggression is from 19... Uh, what? <laughs> 1970 or 1980 or 1990. No, but no, it was, no, no, it was nothing like that. None of the above. You know, where nobody, are we, where nobody are we with that matter? No, my case is Has still it been resolved? My case is still And will you still slap a policeman tomorrow because you think these policemen are no, brutal? No, 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 no. What you should say is, will you still protect yourself and your family tomorrow? And I'll say yes, by any means necessary. <laughs> but okay, I mean, we're in a new dispensation. And a lot of people have said a lot of things about the Tinubu administration. This administration has done quite a number of things. You know, uh, cash transfer, which has been announced. Um, you know, where's for subsidy removal, but a lot of attempts to address economic issues. Are you, do you feel much better uh, today than you were, you know, under President Buhari, or even if you can trace it uh, backwards? I will, say, I will say one thing about the current administration is that I know very well that the president is one of the most, uh, what's the word I will use here, versed human beings when it comes to the issues facing Nigeria. I knew him growing up as a mentor. He was one of the people with my uncle, Dr. Beko Ransom Kuti, Uncle Ghani, fire me. You know, many of them who inspired people like me to understand that securing our nation's future was the reason why we're all here. And he knows what has to be done in this country to fix the issues of this country. He knows where, in fact, he knows, he understands the socialist theories because I don't, I've never, I don't know any president of Nigeria. I've never met them before. I've never sat with them before. I've never had ideological discussions with Buhari, Jonathan, or Basanjo before. Only from afar, but with, with uh, President Tinubu. Growing up, I've heard him discuss the theories that I know for a fact we need to implement in this country to fix this country. You know? so if he's not doing them, then there's a reason you know, why he's not doing them. And he should look within himself and find the courage to take the steps that will actually create a legacy for him. You know, we, we cannot continue to allow Nigeria to be run for only the rich people of this country. For them to continue to extract wealth in a country where they feel they have no responsibility towards. You can't be extracting billions from the natural resources and the common wealth of the people, and at the same time, use your power in the media and your influence with the intelligentsia lie to these people that you have no responsibility towards them. That everything you have extracted for yourself is for yourself and your family alone, even though it belongs to them too. You know, to allow this narrative to continue in this society, instead of to have the government to enforce laws that will make sure that everything extracted from this country is used for the benefit of this country, is to continue to tell ourselves lies and there's no legacy that can be built within that kind of a lie. You know, if nobody around the president will tell him that, I'll tell him that today. Okay, as we begin to wrap up, uh, Shil, let me ask you, this is a month of uh, celebration. Yes. And I've seen your picture, <laughs> and uh, Femi, you and uh, Femi, I've seen the two of you together on social media, and celebration in Nigeria, elsewhere, and all that. Tell us about 
collaboration and the fulfillment that he brings to you. As a, as a father, <laughs> as a son of your father. <laughs> Celebration as just finished last on Sunday. Yes. Uh, about like a week ago now, it was uh, really great. For me, you know, I mean, that's what legacy is for me, to have, you know, people willing to celebrate what you've achieved in, a name, in your name, but on behalf of your people, you know, to have it celebrated. This is like my father died in 1997. You know, it's almost 30 years that he's been dead now. And sometimes it feels like yesterday. The way people talk about him, it feels like he's even still around sometimes. You know, um, and that, that even brings me to wonder why nobody else in this country wants that for themselves, especially when they have the opportunity. You know, at least with the billions, they, they don't have to invent Afrobeat. With the billions they have, imagine if one person fixed the education or the healthcare, or whatever we need in this country, or at least supports uh, uh, the institutions to a level where they can become something viable to this country and they can build legacies. You know, but, you know, people are, rather have Rolls Royce, I guess, than have a legacy. In Nigeria, you have to choose one. <laughs> anyway, on that note, I would like to thank you very much, yeah, uh, Shimwane Kulapko Kuti, for joining us on This Is Live, this Sunday talk show.